American Issues Take Two. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and we're going to talk about social media today. We're going to talk about whether it's sufficiently regulated, and if not, what can we do about that? Uh, we are joined today by my co-host, Tim Apicella, our special uh, contributor, Stephanie Stoll Dalton, and our special esteemed guest who is wearing a very nice lay this morning. He is going to explain it to us, uh, Jeff Portnoy. Let's start with you, Jeff. Why the lay? Why not? <laughs> oh, uh, the, the firm graciously provided this to me last night. They recognized my 50 years of dedicated service. And I was very pleased and honored. I had no idea. And so I thought, you know, the things with Lay's are that you get them at night and then you go home and what do you do with them? So I said, I'll bring it in this morning. And if you, you can't see the floor, but the floor is now flower laden with <laughs> flowers falling off the Lay's. So that's the short answer. Because all conquerors are greeted with flowers. Yes. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It goes way back. Yeah. And we did see, uh, you know, more of the lay before the show began. And uh, yes, I, it's the biggest lay I have ever seen. Oh, it's great. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. They use, well, it, they use it for statutes, but they didn't have the statute ready. <laughs> Coming soon. Yeah, that's that's right. step two. That's right. So let's talk about uh, social media. You know, I was watching uh, cable the other day, and uh, there's a fellow named Jean Favreau. Favreau was a survey taker. He used to be a speechwriter for Barack Obama. He's an actor, uh, too. He's really good. And he has he has uh, maybe a dozen young people at a big table and a camera on them, and he's interviewing them about their, mm, their political activities, political consciousness. And what you get from this interview is extraordinary. They didn't know what district they lived in, <clears throat> all of them. Uh, they, didn't, they weren't sure who was running. Uh, they weren't sure if they were going to vote. Uh, they weren't sure about any platform position uh, or any issue facing their district or the country. And uh, it was extraordinary because this is a generation that we have all been waiting for. Now, you know, you can't say that one table and one survey is all that meaningful, but it was shocking and it was scary that if we are waiting for this generation you know, to take the reins and make it right, um, you can't you can't be too confident, I think. And so how is this generation being trained? They were all in their early 20s, mid 20s. How, how, how uh, is this generation being educated? You know, the schools that came before and, of course, the social media that comes now. I don't think there's any question that this generation uh, is depending on social media for its information and social media is letting them down and letting us down. Um, on the other hand, there is the First Amendment. There's not too much we can do about it, uh, at least right now, under the way you know things are operating. And so we have a problem. You know, Houston, we have a problem. Tim, um, what is the problem? Why are they not being educated about political issues that will determine their future and ours? Well, presumably, or the assumption is that the more information you're you have access to. Uh, particularly the internet. I mean, that's who goes to the library anymore. Um, presumably, you get the more access you have, the more you read, and the more uh, better educated and aware of issues that you you become. And that I think is the opposite is true because I think they probably feel overwhelmed with information and, and choices for information, and so um, the interest is contracting, not expanding. And, you know, how many social media accounts can you have at one time? And how many news articles can you read at one time? And um, I think the interest wanes. And uh, also you have to look at the lives of uh, Gen Z and, 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 and look at their lives and how many jobs are they trying to hold down just to make uh, economic progress in their lives? Um, how can they pry themselves away from their, um, you know, Nintendo uh, when they're busy on the couch? I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that would indicate they're not as well informed as maybe the baby boom generation or even Gen X. Uh, but in, in fact, they're not being informed. They're not, they're tuning out, not turning in. Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, it's, and the, the, the rubber meets, meets the road when they either vote or don't vote or how they vote. Uh, Stephanie, you're an educator. Um, and uh, what, what are your thoughts about this? Where have we failed and, and where is social media, you know, filling the void? Well, 
one thing we have to, or I am appreciating and understand that the the uh, the transaction uh, that you have with social media is new to the world, right? So the internet allows people to speak, to interact across it. So it's no longer kind of a one way uh, communication, uh, you know, receptivity, reading and receptivity at the library and all that. But these people are able to then um, make statements and speak into the world like nobody has ever done before. And there's some dreadful, I mean, there's some amazing consequences of having people able to do that and how it is that we get them to do that at a level of uh, consequence for them and for for our our, our democracy. So I, I see it as um, we've got a two-way transaction going on here that and both ways need help, but both ways need to be, to, you know, Gener de developed and nurtured and grown into a higher level and get off the uh, you know soap opera thing. So anyway, mm -hmm. I see that as a as a challenge um, as to how uh, to 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 do things with the internet that will encourage the the quality of the of that transaction both ways. I don't forget that social media is raw capitalism, and the bottom line counts, and sometimes the wrong people are. Important, you know, the, there was an article in the paper a couple of years, a, a couple of days ago, about um, about Vladimir Putin's contribution of some three hundred million dollars to political parties over the past two cycles of national elections to the U.S. and elsewhere, and 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 you know, uh, the question is, where does that three hundred million go? What what? How do you get the best bang for that buck? Well. Uh, I think we could conclude, at least in part, that it goes to social media because you get really good bang for your buck. If you can reach, you know, young people on that, you can either neutralize them or point them in the wrong direction. And it's raw capitalism. Uh, Jeff, you, you, for 50 years, you've been representing the media. For 50 years, you've been talking about the First Amendment and protecting the rights of the media to do First Amendment. Um, so I know where you're coming from. Uh, I think I know. I, I always say that to myself, and then you surprise me. Um, where are you coming from, Jeff? Uh, what about social media? Um, is the First Amendment too wide a path? Well, you know, for 40 years, I didn't have to deal with social media. Uh, you know, it's still a very recent phenomenon in most of our lives. Uh, and it's a very controversial matter legally. Uh, courts are struggling with how much freedom should web posts have versus traditional media in permitting statements to be posted that otherwise would be actionable if in the newspaper or on television. Uh, the lack of identity of people who post anonymously and the difficulty in learning their identity from web posts, uh, having to go to court many times, and then even then, uh, maybe not having the judge rule that the host has to give up the identity of the poster. So anonymous postings. Many of us, you know, grew up with an encyclopedia in our house, and that was it. You looked at the encyclopedia to find out about Greece or you know, President Coolidge. I mean, now there's, I don't know, 10,000 sites on Greece. So, I mean, uh, I don't think it's a lack of information. I think it's too much information and too much false information. That's the problem. We didn't get a lot of false information when we were in school or thereafter because there was no place to get it. We read our local newspaper. We maybe watched the television. We went to the encyclopedia. We asked our parents and we went to school and had a history book, which wasn't censored every two days by a right wing school board. And teachers weren't scared about teaching the truth and losing their jobs. I mean, you know, we know what's going on in a lot of places in this country. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you can blame a generation. I, I think I think they are having access to a lot of bad stuff. 
And uh, that's not going to stop. And, you know, Tim mentioned Nintendo, shows you how old he is. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think there is Nintendo anymore. Did I say Nintendo? I yes. meant uh, Game yeah. Game Boy. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, uh, uh, it's a whole other world. And I don't think, I mean, I don't know anything about it other than when I have a client who is unhappy with a post and, you know, retains me to try to do something about it. I mean, I don't know what TikTok is. To me, it's what a clock does. But I mean, uh, to, to, to people who are five years old to 25, it's where they are six hours a day. And even in school. I mean, how do you keep a student from taking that phone out and, and, and not even paying attention for six hours and, and texting literally for six hours? I mean, it's a whole new world. But you know what? I'm just too old to completely understand it and know that somebody like Donald Trump has been able to exploit it and his accolades have been able to exploit it. And it's a very uh, dangerous weapon, but it ain't going anywhere. And I don't want to get too technical, but the Communications Decency Act, which I have been predicting since maybe the first year it was enacted, which is a free speech act that allows these websites to exist without any real control is under attack. And it's under attack by the left and the right. And I think it's not too long before it's amended. And there will be some restrictions placed upon what you can and can't post. Uh, it, it's going to happen sooner rather than later. And you can see some of the courts beginning to say, hey, this goes too far. You know, and I'm a First Amendment guy, but it does go too far. I think you need to stand behind what you print or what you allow to be posted. And, you know, you're subject to defamation laws, you're subject to privacy laws, you're subject to copyright laws. But right now you got a lot of immunity. And if you're Google or Facebook or TikTok or some of the dark websites, you can do whatever the heck you want. Is that is it feasible though, Jeff? You know, to, is that is that bill feasible in terms of uh, asking uh, social media companies to monitor everything? Um, no, and, and they're not going to be asked to monitor. And, and you know, the irony in the bill as it exists now is the discrepancy between doing nothing and having very little liability, or being a good citizen and monitoring the site and undertaking liability. That's what the law is right now, by the way. Mm -hmm. If you do nothing and just let people post, it's considered a bulletin board. Mm -hmm. But if you want to make sure that Nazis aren't posting on your site and you have a group like Facebook has now that looks at what's being posted, Facebook is actually giving itself the potential for being sued by being good citizens. It, it just doesn't make any sense. No. Oh. Uh, Tim, you know, you have been talking about the FCC for a long time, um, and you have some strong opinions on that. But, you know, one distinction I would make uh, in asking for your comment on this is uh, there, there's misinformation. Um, and, you know, there's also, uh, as Jeff says, there's defamation. And uh, two are not necessarily the same. Uh, defamation is not so likely to bring our country down misinformation is a, uh, a an electorate that is misinformed on a large scale basis cannot be a democracy that's my view uh, what's your view about the the government's um, obligation if you will the obligation of the FCC and, and like agencies to take affirmative action well I'm not gonna I'm not gonna really diminish what I've already said about 45 times on various shows here with think Tech Hawaii and that is we need to make a distinction between those who report quote unquote facts of the news versus opinions of the news. And um, again, I believe in the creation of a firewall and, and not, not reduce the content from anyone. Uh, I agree with Jeff. I mean, freedom of speech is actually paramount in the society, but we need to differentiate that from commentary and opinion versus those that are, are trying to state a fact for public consumption. And I just say, you know, get get the news desk, uh, either segregate them into two separate news desks. And, and like they used to do in the 60s is say, now our opinion commentary from Roger Mudd. 
uh, you know, versus um, one person doing both both jobs of reporting facts and then giving their filter and, and opinion of those facts. So I, I think the FCC still has a role in that. And that's what I'd like to see happen is a, a segregation of, of commentary and, 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 and opinion versus uh, just going down the list of, of, of news facts. Now, you know, but I, I don't want to throw any rain on your parade, but sometimes well, yeah, but you it's do. very hard. Okay, here it goes. But we have no more, we have no more fairness doctrine. Well, that's my point, Jeff. And we there basically have no more equal time doctrine. I mean, the FCC but, is but, about yeah. as toothless as well, anybody. You know what they care about? Somebody says a four-letter word. That's yeah. what they care about. Yeah, I understand that. That's all that. they care about. But, Jeff, that's my point. It's time for the FCC to step up. And I know it's there are committees. It's not going to happen, Tim. Well, that is my that, that, wish. Uh, hope springs <laughs> eternal, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's go to Stephanie for a minute. Stephanie, you know, sometimes the difference between fact and opinion is very blurred, and uh, you can hardly tell. And, and furthermore, the American viewership, listenership um, has, has had the experience of that blur for a long time. And I think if you, if you pose a, a blurred statement um, to one of those kids at that table, um, he would not be able, or she would not be able to tell you whether that's fact or opinion. So who's going to make the distinction? It's uh, not so easy to make that distinction, and uh, neither the uh, viewership nor the government will easily make that distinction. So my, my suggestion to you, and like your opinion on this, may I say, uh, or your fact on this, <laughs> if you like, is this something that we can actually do, or is it pie in the sky? And are we in a place where we can't come back? Very good uh, question. And uh, we have some actual masters of this out there already who can be our models. And of course, the numero uno one is Donald Trump, because he wants to do something with this media. He, he uses it to have something happen to other people that he can use. And uh, as we've been talking about how we've used our resources before to get information, to seek it out and, uh, and, and delve into resources and, and use them. We use them to build our knowledge and to meet uh, whatever our, our inquiry is to get more information. But there's this other level that now is becoming obviously the way of the internet and the use of it is that you use it to make something happen that you desire to do and get to an outcome. And learning how to do that is uh, not everybody's forte. I mean, we need to start looking at that level of usage of it because that's where it's camouflaging everything. So when you're when you're doing something with it and trying to influence and change, then um, this whole thing of what's new, what's old, what's 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 misinformation what's you know um any any you can't you can't sort it out that easily when it's engulfed and when it's contained within this larger purpose well tim and, and i disagree here because i think the worst thing is for the government to get involved in any way in regulating speech i i just think that is the end of democracy and so i understand people's concerns I have the same feeling about, you know, stifling speech on liberal college campuses, uh, you know, not allowing certain speakers to speak and sorting out fact versus opinion. Uh, there is a legal definition in the world of defamation because many people who were sued for defamation, one of their primary defenses is, it's my opinion and opinion is not actionable. There's no such thing as a false opinion, but the law has made it clear that the opinion has to be based upon true facts. And if the facts are false, that doesn't protect your opinion. So, you know, it, it, and not everybody agrees with me, believe me, probably lots of people don't. And I know that because I've been in debates with people at the university and other places. I just think you have to just let it ride and hope that the listener can sort out truth from falsity. And unfortunately, with all the access that people have and all the falsity, that's much harder than it was when, when we were growing up. 
Mm -hmm. So, Jeff, yep. quick question. Yep. Um, how did they do it when we had the fairness doctrine in place? How did they regulate and say, you've gone over the line, you're on public airways, and you're being, you know, your, your words are being detrimental to the public consumption? How did they do it back in the day? Well, they did it because, the, you know, the FCC argued just like you did, that it's a public airway and that, uh, you know, there was only three television stations. And, was that and detrimental to the First Amendment? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I, I think you can argue that both ways. I mean, uh, uh, you know, and for people who don't know, and I you know you all guys know, it meant that if you did a program on uh, anti-smoking, you were required to allow the tobacco companies to have time to argue the other side of the issue. Uh, and was the country better for that? Yeah, I think so. But again, you know, I, I just think you have to leave it to broadcasters. Frankly, I think there should be a fairness doctrine, but that doctrine should be in the newsroom. I don't think it should be in Congress. And that's where you and I differ, uh, you know, and, and yeah, you know, you'll say, well, people aren't going to do that. Is Sinclair Broadcasting going to pr promote both sides of an issue? Is Fox going to promote both sides of an issue? And on the other hand, is CNN going to promote both sides of an issue? I think we all know the answer, but I, I still I still think when you weigh it, I think government needs to stay out. But I can certainly understand your position and say, hey, no one else is doing it. Well, mm, you know, we've had autocrats in the in the uh, 20th century. We have. And, and, and uh, yeah, you heard this uh, here on Think Tech. Um, God, I'm learning something. Is that a fact or is that a thing? <laughs> you think. Now, wait, but that's a good point. Is that a fact or opinion that someone's an autocrat? Uh, well, given all the books that have been written, uh, it's a fact. Um, no. Nobody no. would argue that's a fact. If you, you, you can't argue that one on me, Jeff. You're good, but not that good. <laughs> okay. I would ask you what facts, first of all, who are you talking about and what facts are you relying on for your opinion? But go ahead. Well, I, I tell you, you know what I mean. But I mean, my point, my point about the autocrats is they used you. media. They used media for of propaganda. Hitler, and, is and, the, Hitler and Trump are the two prime examples. Brilliant. Yes, they are. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. And, and so really the, the problem is that, as you say, if, if you let it get into the hands of government or you let government take it, you know, um, which I think is, is, the, is the road that Hitler took and, uh, and the, the road that, uh, uh, that Trump takes, um, then, you know, you have a problem. By the way, but, not to equate those two. I don't want to get any letters. No. <laughs> one, has late, a must, one has a late, mustache. Jeff. One had a mustache. Uh, okay. So let's not be confused. <laughs> so if so, if you had if you had government involved here, and then the autocrat appears in the government, you have a problem. Um, on the other hand, if you don't have government involved and it's chaos, um, you have a misinformed public or in an, an, a public like those kids at the table. Um, either road that we have identified is is a road to perdition. I'm sorry. And the question, you know, it's um, it's the, the the story of the Christmas Carol. What is what is the future? What is the what is uh, the future for Christmas? Let, let me tell you an anecdote, which is okay. a true anecdote. All right. I went not, to law no school. opinion. No opinion. No, no. Opinion. And I'll be quick with this, but I want to show you things. Things that remain the same, even though they may change because of technology. When I went to Duke, my my wife was an elementary school teacher, and she taught fourth and fifth grade in the Durham County School District, which was very rural, uh, a lot of blacks, but a lot of poor whites, okay? And one day she asked me to come in and, 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 and give the kids a quiz on people, on famous people. And I came in with 25 names and it ranged from the president of the United States to country Western singers, to race car drivers. And I went through the list of 25 names and asked the kids who they knew and recognized. Okay. I'll never forget this. The number one answer was a race car driver over the president. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do things change very much? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. You know, about how kids know and learn. These are fourth graders 
more people knew the race car driver than knew who the president of the United States was. Okay. I mean, I, I would grant you that this has been happening for a while. Um, and, uh, you know, the media teaches us uh, about race car drivers and we emulate no. them and so forth. But Stephanie, you know, the ghost of Christmas future uh, in, um, in, the, in the, the, the Christmas Carol back when uh, is enough to scare Ebenezer Scrooge. Is it enough to scare us? How concerned should we be that either road, the road of government control of the press or the, the road of chaos where everyone can say everything and it's very hard to make a distinction? Um, that's not between... true. Everybody can't say anything. You can't yell fire in a crowded that's theater. Right. You can't defame somebody. You can't threaten somebody in a way that looks like they're going to be in imminent harm. You can't steal copyright. So, Jay, there are restrictions. So we just can't say you can say anything you want about anybody because you can't. If you say something false about somebody, and it's, you know, you can be held liable. I mean, Jeff, what about inciting not... riot? What? What about inciting riot well, on the public yeah. airways? Well, you're right. I mean, what, what, about, what about QAnon? What about conspiracy theories that have no basis in fact? Uh, but, but is, is there accountability for that? Stephanie, so what's, 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 the, what's the path? What's going to happen here? Well, I mean, Jeff's point is so good and that there are these, uh, the, this body of law. So we, we, we all need to know we already have the guide rails. So we got to get these guide rails up and get people to know about them. Well, and how what, about enforce how about, it? How about what? Enforcing the existing guardrails. Well, and enforcing the existing guardrails, of course. And this is education. And uh, those kids uh, in those schools, they need to know about it because they're all, you, they all, it's only now that anybody's asking a rural kid who the president is. I mean, they never asked him 50 years ago. They probably didn't know it then. But I mean, I think you were implying that maybe there was a larger percentage of them that would have known that. But I, but anyway, I, I just think that we, we need to get that knowledge base up and we need to be able to give them the tools to you. We've got to figure out the tools. There's some research that needs to be nobody, done. Nobody teaches, gotta, civic, nobody teaches civics anymore. And we got to do that. We've Nowhere. Gotta, I'm talking about Hawaii. Well, but, but then exactly. also you talk about enforcement under the law. Well, who's going to do that? Uh, Eileen Cannon, let's bring Eileen Cannon. Let's bring her on the show and ask her about enforcing the law. Um, you know, I think we're in a place where enforcement of the law for certain people and certain things, you know, is no longer happening. We are not not a nation of laws anymore. That some people consider themselves above the law, and they are, in in many ways. Tim, your thoughts about the future? Where is this going to take us? One road or the other? Well, I'm reminded of Charles Dickens' line in in the Christmas Carol. When you 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 invoke the ghost of Christmas future, and that was, um, are these the things that will be or may be? Now, right now, Texas and Florida seem to be the the hot spot on this very issue. Uh, D Governor DeSantis is basically saying, I'm going to uh, put out a bill that prohibits any internet company from restricting uh, one's ability to opine or speak on any of the social media accounts. Uh, that's gone to the Fifth Circuit Court. I think they've partially upheld his concept, but the Eleventh District Court um, has not. So, you know, this is going to go to the Supreme Court over this very issue, and uh, that may be the ghost of, of of Christmas future that needs to be determined, and will be or may be. And well, confusion in general, Jeff, does not really help our electorate. But that for them, not. Confusion in general does not help our electorate. And there are people out there, including Vladimir Putin. They're not confused. No, no they, he's not. He's not confused. No, no, but all. you're talking about doesn't help our electorate. People aren't confused. They believe what they want to believe. They're not confused. They, 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 they have a certain set of beliefs that have been reinforced. This is a critical point, in my view. Trump didn't create these issues he just played into people's fears and beliefs in a very brilliant way trump is not the reason why poor whites hate african-americans that's been the case 
you know, I'm, and this is a broad overstatement, but Trump plays into it. Trump didn't play into having people dislike immigrants. You know what I mean? So, and it's the same thing, I'm sorry, to go back to Hitler. Hitler knew that people were anti-Semitic. And what do we do? We need to find an enemy that people already believe is out there and we'll help reinforce it, right? So, you yeah. know, this gets pretty yeah. philosophical. But, no, um, it's good, yes. you know, it's good, I, I, and I'm not a psychiatrist, but I think there's been a lot written about it. So, mm -hmm. you know, and yes, yeah, social media encourages that. There's no yeah. question about that. But and should Jeff, we, it's should, like a should, cat. Should it's we deny access? Plane. I don't know. Oh, well, here, let me offer a, a drill down point on technology, which is important, if not central for social media. Uh, remember, and it came out in the uh, Cambridge Analytica uh, case scenario that Zuckerberg was collecting information on all of us and selling it. That's another um, whole issue. It's another issue, but what? But but there's there's, a, there's an echo in that. Yeah. So if you can buy my information, then you can address my propensities, yeah, my but sensibilities. This is, this, is, this is the same society that you know kids are texting nude photographs of themselves. Mm -hmm. every day, all day, and then people want to argue about the fact that they're selling information about what soap you buy. I mean, you know, the dilemma is out there. It's well, it's not soap. It's not soap. If they know my propensity is democratic, they're going to see me in that echo chamber, well, I'm and they're going to enhance a, that. And, and yeah. I'm going to get all kinds of social media because somebody has decided that I must be a Democrat. They're going to send me this, and, and they're going to affect my thinking because I'll get that more than anything else. It's it's more than soap. It's much more than soap. But can and we so, go back to Trump for a minute? Because I think uh, Jeff brought him up and he that is what Trump does in everything is that he's like the cat with the mouse. He just keeps working it and working it and su suspecting that he might be able to do this and that. And then he finds out whether he can or not. And that's what he's due to that's what he's doing. His his notions that people are basically racist and that they they want this kind of uh, difficulty um, brought to bear on other people that and they want to be vicious and violent and misogynist. And he thinks that and he goes and tries for it. He doesn't come right out straight and ask yes or no, give me a factual answer. He just watches the thing grow, just like he's doing with the legal system. He just get he keeps putting stuff out there, like they say, throwing the the spaghetti up on the wall to see what sticks but just to see if he can get it to be postponed hey you it. know what it is it's it's been my life sucks and it's because of somebody else yeah. that's what it's that's what trump plays on right and your life else. is not what it should be because of mexican americans or because you feel whatever like me, and you hate you know? the same things i hate and yeah. you want the same things my and life would be much better if it wasn't for you you're the reason that you know <laughs> Uh, uh, I can't pay my bills or, you know, I'm, I'm not happy with my marriage or, you know, that, that's just human nature. You're always looking to blame your problems on somebody else. Sure. <laughs> this is, you know, this is, this is the story of the Inquisition yeah, in the well, 15th century. Sure. If we, Isabella and uh, Ferdinand were not necessarily anti-Semitic at all. But they knew the people on the street needed to have someone yeah, sure. as a scapegoat. So yeah. they adopted anti-Semitism. And sure enough, the mm -hmm. people on the street loved them for it because it was a way they could enhance their power and make everybody feel that they were on their side. Uh, and, and when you look at Trump doing what Trump does, or these 20th century uh, autocrats, or the 21st century autocrats, and you find they're doing the same thing, but much more sophisticated mm -hmm. on many more issues and scapegoats. And uh, I guess, you know, the question, the question is, where do we go on this? So should we be looking at congressional hearings and bills? Should we be looking at, you know, enhancing the powers of agencies like the FCC? Um, should we be finding solace in the courts? Or should we just let it go and, and be a sort of organic about it? Um, either road could lead us to a, a bad place, but um, if, 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 what, if, what, if what 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 direction would you go, Stephanie? Well, I would like to use the 
I would like to use the guardrails that are there. Let's get that up. Bring it up. Let's get everybody familiar with it. Let's start pro prosecuting. Use, gov use government. Yeah, well, use what we've got. Let's see what the tools are that we have. That's why I said earlier, like, we need some research here. Let's get some data. You know, what? what's going to help us with this? What works? What makes a difference? How do you- Do we have the time for that, Tim? Do we have the time- uh, to make a study of this and to do the no, social psychology. You don't need a study. You don't need a study to enact existing laws. I don't know what it is about uh, uh, hesitancy to enforce existing laws. Don't make laws if you're not willing to enforce them. My God. Uh, yeah. You know, the laws are in place. Enforce them. It's just that simple. And I don't know if it's a, a matter of uh, politicians being timid and receiving criticism for uh, enforcing existing laws or not. But whatever it is, knock it off. Well, remember, remember that social media companies have enormous uh, cash. Um, they're doing very well. They're tech companies. And if you recall, a couple of years ago, there were congressional so hearings. Well, I'm talking about lobbying. I'm talking about spreading your cash around Congress. I'm talking about very powerful uh, lobbying organizations. Um, th they can and they do stop efforts in Congress. Well, when you know you start seeing insurrection of our nation's capital as a direct result of social media and, and fanning the flames of discontent, and, and Jeff has well pointed out uh, a grievance-laden society, then it's time to step in and say, what you're putting out there, is that, is that for the betterment of our society or is it for the dissension of our society? And I'm sorry, but someone needs to make a decision and come in and say, we're going to uh, reinstall the fairness doctrine. We're going to reinstall decency of communications. I, and I'm sorry, but I know it's a heavy handed thing to do, but we've got to get to a place where A, our population agrees on what the facts are rather than uh, just making them up. And B, um, once the facts are agreed upon, then you're, you're entitled to your opinion. But let's, let's get a slate of, of, of common uh, accepted facts first. And then okay. let people make their opinions. In a while, Tim is going to tell us how he really feels. Right. No, I mean, just warming his up. Point, his point to enforce the laws that we have on the books is Okay, good. Jeff, your, your, your opportunity for rebuttal. <laughs> My view is you have 300 television stations. You've got, unfortunately, only a few newspapers, but they're out there. You have access to all those newspapers, if you want. Uh, you've got thousands of internet sites. And so there's plenty of places to go if you want to, to get the information that you want to get. And I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't think the government should be telling us what information we need to have. That That is in my view, anti-democratic. But I Definitely. certainly I certainly understand the position. And, you know, it's like anything else. There are two sides to every coin. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not criticizing Tim's position on it. Yeah. I just believe it's a marketplace of ideas. We've never had the expansion of marketplace of ideas that we have today, not even close. When we grew up, we had three television stations, three. So, you know, I just think it's viewer's choice. And uh, unfortunately, you know, you watch kids spending six to eight hours a day because their parents allow them on their phones. We watch teenagers spending God knows how much time on their phones. I think it's a parental issue. I think it's an education schooling issue. And the last people I would have uh, enforcing it, other than laws, which I don't disagree with, you pass a law, then, then enforce it or don't pass it. But I'm not a big fan of governmental interference in right. speech. And I know that can be hurtful and harmful. It can also it. be corrupted. If, if, if Trump Jeff, has me, his let way, me just he interject would one idea all here. Those people. Let me inject one idea. We had hundreds of thousands of Americans yeah. die due to misinformation about COVID. Uh, yet it was a freedom of speech to present those crazy ideas from Donald Trump and his ilk. And the bottom line is, should we have had hundreds of thousands of Americans die as due to misinformation about a health 
a, a public health disease, a, a, a public health crisis. Did but, the but, First Amendment was ahead, it in Tim. the right place for that particular issue? But but but, and I don't disagree. There was a lot of misinformation. misinformation but Tim, that's an opinion. You know, I never forget that press conference Trump had. He had 12 medical doctors standing in front of the White House giving the exact opposite to what you think is misinformation. And that's so, my point I mean, exactly. We are not problem. agreeing on the facts. And these were medical facts. I mean, these right. were scientific well, but they're facts. they're not facts. They're not facts because people say they're not facts, right? And well, I, then we have a flat world. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe some people believe that. Yeah, they do. They uh, yeah. do. Okay, Stephanie, I want to ask one more question before we close, and that is, all of this considered, you know, and many, many people would agree with the two sides of the question, one side or the other, or both, a combination. What effect is this going to have in November? Uh, how are we going to see this play out? Because the, you know, I don't think the Democrats understand as well as Trump how you distract people, um, how you confuse people. Um, how you take them down a path uh, that takes them away from the facts. Um, what's going to happen in November? Because that's a sort of a benchmark for the future of the democracy. Yeah, good, good, good point, Jay. Um, I believe that the believing part of it <laughs> is the big, di the big difficulty. So whatever they believe right now is what they're going to do in November. Between now and then, the chances of having any much change are very, very small because people take time that the whole belief system is like tectonic plate movement. It takes a long time to affect any change. And as you've all brought up, without having, without, we're not doing anything about helping people understand and know more and how it all works. Uh, we've got to figure out how to better do that so we can get these, uh, you know, people to be able to change their beliefs or be sub, you know subject to a lot of information that then they have the critical power to decide what to take in and make a difference in the way they think. Now, it's just we've never but, had a handle on it. People that remember everybody got burnt at the stake and that didn't change their opinion. They went to get burnt at the stake. So, <laughs> you know, it's a very powerful thing that what people think once they get it in their heads. And when you have maniacals like, like our former president there with a big microphone doing these things that presumably we have some body of laws or some guide rails that we could use to help get that cleared up right as it's coming out of his mouth that would help so it doesn't get stimulated it doesn't get set in right away so just remember uh, my favorite story about the emperor has no clothes that's exactly what we're talking about right yeah yeah that's true people I, have beliefs people have beliefs even when they're staring at reality mm -hmm. <laughs> right i mean no matter, so right right yeah, yeah. Well, the, <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the question ultimately is, is democracy perfectible or not? And uh, is humanity perfectible or not? And um, uh, we're out of time. Uh, I wish we had another uh, six hours to, uh, to answer that. I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed we do. Um, Indeed. <laughs> Jeff Indeed. Portnoy and Tim Appenzella, Stephanie Stoltz-Alton, thank you so much for a really, really good conversation. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.